Astronauts who live and work for long periods of time in the weightless environment of space suffer the loss of some bone and muscle strength since their uh, bones and muscles have much less work to do. NASA scientists have been working to find countermeasures to keep astronauts fit and strong. One of those experiments underway on board the International Space Station is called SPRINT. Recently, I spoke with the uh, principal investigator, Dr. Lori Plouts Snyder, and I asked her to describe what SPRINT is investigating. So SPRINT is an exercise program that we're testing on the space station that is evaluating the use of higher intensity but lower duration and frequency exercises. And we're looking to protect the cardiovascular system, so aerobic fitness and skeletal muscle strength and endurance and muscle fitness, and also bone health. Okay. So let's talk about the space gym. It is got three main pieces of equipment up there. We have the treadmill, we have the stationary bicycle, and we also have that resistive exercise device that simulates weightlifting here on Earth, so it's, it's this for strength training. So all three of those um, pieces of equipment are being used for crew members who are on the um, sprint program, and the others are also using it as well. So can you yes. tell me what's the difference? Sure. Everyone uses the same equipment, mm -hmm. the bicycle, the treadmill, and the weightlifting. The sprint participants do a special program where they do the weightlifting three days a week instead of the usual six days a week. So they're doing half the number of sessions, but the sessions that they do do are harder workouts. And then for the aerobic exercise, they can switch off between the treadmill and the cycle. We like them to use the treadmill at least two-thirds of the time, is the recommendation. And for that, they do special exercise protocols. We have four different protocols that they switch off between. One is as short as 30-second intervals. So okay. the whole workout is only eight or nine minutes, including the warm-up. And then there's uh, two-minute intervals, four-minute intervals, and a half an hour continuous okay. exercise. So shorter, high-intensity versus the longer, low-intensity exactly. of, the, of the prescribed. So where did, where did the idea come from? The idea from this came actually from about 20 years of ground research, much of which was funded by NASA, okay. and 50 years of exercise experience in space flight. And okay. we brought all of that we had learned from all of these things together to look at what do we think would be the most effective and the most efficient exercise program. Okay, so have we done any of the, um, the, uh, the kind of the sprint protocol here on Earth with any of the crew members before they go? How does that work? Yeah, so any of the crew members who sign up for sprint, mm -hmm. they get to practice these protocols on the ground to make sure that they like them and that they know how to do them and that this is going to work for them. Because if you haven't done these high intensity intervals before, it takes a little getting used to. Okay, sure. All right, so um, overall, are there any, we know the health benefits for bone and muscle, that's what we've been looking at. Are there any other benefits that, that they could possibly... We're seeing a lot of benefits for cardiovascular fitness. Okay. So the heart and the breathing and the overall endurance. Okay, very interesting. And so I understand this experiment's running through Expedition 44. What do you hope to be able to offer crew members after this? Really, there's two main things we hope to offer. One is an optimized prescription that can be used on station for different durations, so six months, 12 months, if we ever do anything longer. So we hope to deliver an optimized exercise prescription. But equally as important, we hope to learn a lot about why the exercise program works and what parts work in different ways so that we can recommend exercise programs for our next missions, our long duration exploration missions, and also to know what requirements we need for the next generation of exercise hardware. So the exercise equipment that goes to Mars will probably look a lot different than yeah. today's equipment. Yeah. And do we have any um, results back? Are we seeing anything? Well, we've had five crew members complete the Sprint Active program okay. that, that's this new high-intensity prescription, and they're doing very well so far. So it's, so it's meeting our expectations. Uh, the feedback has been good. Some of the crew members say it's a pretty tough workout. Yeah. But... Um, we have it spaced so that there are recovery periods in between. Well, and I would imagine as well that with the shorter durations, the high intensity, that that allows more crew time for other activities? Or it could. I mean, instead of everyday long duration, yeah. you know, that whole two-hour um, yeah. exercise session. So um, also, do you feel that any of your research that you're doing in this study is um, 
going to apply, how will it apply to us here on Earth for, for people maybe um, who are suffering from osteoporosis or anything like that? Yeah, sure. So a lot of the things we're learning scientifically will help with the understanding of physiology. Okay. But from the practical point of view, we would all love a very effective short workout that right. we could get in during our lunchtime or sure. by not taking up a whole lot of our day. And so there's a lot of a lot of interest out there in the regular community for what is the most efficient workout that would give you great benefits without a lot of time. Correct. Great. Well, it's all very, very interesting. I love the, the uh, you know, the health and fitness is obviously very important to us here on Earth, but it's more so for our crew members who are there aboard the International Space Station. So thanks so much for coming out and talking with us, Lori. Thanks. And, it's uh, my pleasure. Best of luck. Thanks. Thank you.